Hey Floss Tube, it's Leslie with Fat Cat Flossing, and I'm here to tell you all about the shopping spree. Yep, I had my early Christmas down to the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, and it was awesome! But before I get started on listing all that stuff out, and I, this is my second try at this because I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode the first time. So here we go again. Y'all excuse me, I still have a scratchy throat, so I'm gonna take a sip of water now and then. Um, and please excuse the funky light, it's, um, mid-afternoon and the light's just kind of weird in here, um, which is why my glasses are so dark. <clears throat> but anyway, before I get started, I just want to take a second to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the kind, kind comments that everybody has left on my other three um, floss tube videos. I um, just really didn't expect to be received so warmly and it's just you know, warms my heart. Thank y'all so much. Um, everybody left the kindest comments and the thumbs up. And um, I've got 180 something subscribers, I think, which is just so incredible. I'm just thrilled. Um, I have been duplicate posting on both Leslie Hurley and Fat Cat Flossing um, because I can't for the life of me figure out how to change my channel name. And I'd like to because I don't particularly want my actual name <laughs> as the name of my channel. But that's pretty much the way it is for right now. And I have sent YouTube an email, but I've heard a big fat zero back so far. So we'll see. Maybe it'll just still be Leslie Hurley forever and ever. Amen. Or maybe eventually I'll figure it out and become fat cat flossing for real. Cross your fingers. But anyway, thanks again to everybody. Y'all are so kind and it really is much appreciated. I... I I'm thrilled. Okay, so now to talk about all the goodies. There are so many goodies. I was so bad. My husband was so kind. He put up with me for a long time. He finally left and went down to the golf store and killed some time there. I called him to come back and pick me up, but I had the best time. I was there for almost two hours, and Anne, and I can't remember the other young lady's name that was working in the store with her, but they are so awesome, y'all. You just could not ask for a better experience at an LNS, and they had, <clears throat> pardon me, some great news. They are doing so well. She's been open in that location for four years, and they're doing so well that when their lease is up um, in summer 2018, she thinks they're actually going to expand to a larger um, venue. So great for them. Isn't that wonderful to hear when so many other um, small needlework places are having to close their doors? So I am thrilled for them because they couldn't be nicer people, and they just deserve every wonderful thing in the world to happen to them. So, anyway, moving right along. First thing I did was, you know, when I talked on my last video about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, plans for 2018, one of the things I pulled out is Shepherd's Bush 2,000 years ago. And this was the only thing I pulled out of my stash. I'm sorry, the ceiling fan's on and it's blowing this around. Um, the only thing I pulled out of my stash that I didn't already have the linen for. So, that was my first thing was to... Um, get the linen for this and my plan is to finish them and have them framed um in the long oblong frame like that with all of them together telling the story um i probably can't afford jill rinsel framing but i'm going to try to do something similar anyway but so i've got a long <laughs> long long really long piece of linen to do them on and and had the hardest time finding a long piece like that for me and she worked so hard at it. it took a lot of time and they're just wonderful if i can figure out how to edit in photos i'm going to put in some photos of the store if not I'll, i'm going to post some on facebook on stitch mania and cross stitch addicts because they're lovely ladies and i just want to sing their praises to the sky but anyway that's the stuff for um 2000 years ago and then i got into the new stuff boy i got in it with both feet and hands and just went to town with it and picked up all kinds of such fun things. Got some different things for me. So I'm really excited and a little apprehensive to see how all this comes out, but mostly just really excited. One of the first things I picked up was Lady Liberty by Blackbird Designs. And I have never finished anything in a drum format like this. And, but, you know, of course, I have watched Vonna's tutorial, and I think I can, I think I can. Um, 
So I'm going to give it the old college try and see if I can get this done. But I've got a really pretty um, 36 count cream brulee is the linen. And um, I've never worked on 36 count. I've never worked on anything higher than 32. Um, but with my magnifying light, I don't have any trouble on 32 count as long as I use that. So I'm hoping that the 36 count will not um, be the death of me. So y'all cross your fingers on that. <laughs> Report to come. <clears throat> the next thing I picked out was another Blackbird Designs piece. And this is a lovely little booklet. It's just beautifully photographed and done and has lots of information and, and great pattern in it. But the one I'm planning to do is the bird here. I'm sorry for the glare. I just think it's so pretty. Um, the colors will go well in my living and dining room, which is um, red, white, and blue. Um, and nice soft colors, just really like them. I think they're beautiful. And my plan is to finish it. They have the model finished on a box like this. And that's my plan is to try to finish it something like that. I can't afford one of the actual shaker boxes, <clears throat> but I figure Michaels or Hobby Lobby has something I can paint with some acrylics and distress a little bit and I will figure it out. So looking forward to that. I also got 36 count linen for this. So again, it's an experiment. Hopefully I can do it. If not, we'll have a 36 count linen giveaway. Um, but this is light exemplar. Um, and I'm really excited to get started on that too. The next thing I picked out was a little bit different. I decided to continue my Country Cottage Needleworks spree. This is Snowmen. Uh, it's a CCN pattern. And they had it stitched up on this fabric right here on the model. And it was so stinking cute. So cute. So cute. So cute. So I'm giving that a try. This is also something different for me. I've never used a patterned linen like that. So, um, <clears throat> but I think it's going to stitch up really neat. And I'm going to hopefully eventually finish that um, with some kind of flat fold, probably. But stinking cute. Snowmen. Then, <clears throat> I love sheep. I may have mentioned that I think sheep are just some of the cutest things in the world. And I saw this, and I just felt my heart go pitter-patter. So cute. I've also never done a square pin cushion like this, but I think I can. We'll see. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I have um, the pattern and threads, and um, it's really pretty, pretty blue linen, um, which is, picture this plus dwarf, I think. Um, to finish the pin keep in and it came with a little square of wool to go on the top. So again, looking forward to doing that. And, um, I think this may be my first hands-on design pattern. I'm excited about that too. Looking forward to it. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, y'all. Then I picked out a couple that I did not, um, have the linen for, um, or didn't purchase linen for at this time because, you know, Christmas shopping spree was oh, it's just so big. But I've been wanting this pattern for a while. This is called No Bees, No Honey, um, and the rest of it is No Work, No Money. Oh, ain't that God's honest truth. God bless my husband. He works to keep our heads above water. So, um, you know, I've said before I love bee things, and so I'm looking forward to doing this. I think it's really cute. And this is a birds of a feather um, design. And I think it may be the first one of theirs that I've had, too. A lot of designers that are new since I've it's really stitching before. And then I don't remember who I was watching on floss tube that was doing this. Hurt not the earth. I love it because, you know, I'm telling you, we better all suck it up and watch what we're doing or there's not going to be any planet to leave our kids. So I love that. Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees. And tulips are my favorite flower, so I just thought these were really pretty. So I'm really looking forward to doing this, too. And, you know, Plum Street Samplers, I'm in love with all. And then I was about to check out. I was going to pull my wallet out of my purse. And on the way to the register, I passed these two. 
It's a cat and a mouse. She had the models all stitched up. They were so adorable. I couldn't stand it. So I splurred some more. But I only have the patterns for these. I don't, I don't have the um, linen yet for them. Um, so they'll, they'll go in my stash to do on down the line. But I thought they were just so cute I couldn't stand it. These are um, both by Stacy Nash Primitives. And they are the Animal Cracker Series. And there's Monroe the Mouse and Clementine the Cat. And, again, two stinging cute forwards. Love them, love them, love them. And then the last thing I got... Well, the last pattern I got um, at the Shepherd's Needle was this little guy that was marked down to a buck fifty, and you know, again, cheap for a buck fifty. What the heck? And I know I've got a scrap of linen in my stash I can use to do that. So, and it's DMC flosses, so I think I've got probably ninety percent of all the DMC. So, I think I have everything to do him, and you know, a buck fifty. Crazy not to get him, and he's so cute. And then I went floss happy. I have a fair amount of Gentle Arts Simply Shaker and, and Sampler threads. But these were colors I needed between the stuff I had pulled out uh, of my stash to do and the new stuff that I got thread for. So I've got some more to add to my collection. I've stuck them on a ring just to keep track of them, but... Excuse me, they'll end up in, um, I keep them on the little bags, in the little bags on rings in some boxes in my office. And one of these days, we'll go through all my stash and look at all that stuff. <coughs> Sorry, y'all, excuse me. And then I have some weeks. I don't have as much weeks as I have gas thread, but I have some. But I added to it. And again, just pretty threads to finish the stuff that I pulled from stash. Um, the other day, and uh, most of this is for the new stuff. And I, I love floss. I love thread. It's just, pretty. the colors are so pretty and pleasing to the eye, and then just tactile feeling them is cool. It was the same way when I made jewelry. I loved the feel of the beads. It was just a pleasant experience to work with. And then I have very little classic color works for whatever reason. I have nothing against them. I don't particularly prefer one brand of fancy floss over the other, but I don't have a whole lot in my stash. So these were the various classic color works or crescent colors, which are, they used to be crescent colors. Now they're classic color works, I think. Um, but anyway, these were the colors of it that I added. So one of my projects this week will be to put those in little, little floss away bags and add them to their little respective boxes. And I just organize them into a you know, box of gas, bo box of weeks, box of crescent colors and so on and so forth in the same way with like needle necessities and Karen and on and on but I got lots of pretty floss and then I'm going to show you the stuff that I've gotten over the last I don't know probably three or four months um, that I've kind of just stuck in a cubby in my closet and haven't really added into my stash yet um, floss tube is so bad so bad and so wonderful because i was watching floss tube by annie b's designs and oh her stuff's so cute i love it i love it and i had to have some so because i'm bad i ordered a total of five and two of them came as pdf downloads and three of them were hard copy charts and two of them i've gotten already and the third one is on its way to me it was back ordered but don't you love this it's the frog motto. And it says, As ye sow, so shall ye rip. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? I mean, it's, you know, a take on the biblical saying, but Lord knows there's plenty of ripping in my life. So I think this is going to need to be stitched up and go on the wall in my craft room because, yeah, lots of ripping. I hate to frog, but, you know. It happens. It happens to all of us because none of us are perfect. <sighs> but that was hilarious. And I just had to have it. And then this one, which is really cute. It's the um, Pins and Needles Pin Keep. And just very cute. 
this was another um, download PDF that I've already printed off. And what I'll do is I'll put these into um, those clear plastic sleeves and just put them in my um, file box so I keep all my patterns in. And then I saw so many people um, on Facebook and on, you know, floss tube or whatever that have done the thankful pumpkins and, you know, loved them, needed it. So this is thankful pumpkins again by Annie B's designs. And I hope <laughs> maybe I'll sneak this one in for Thanksgiving next year, which would make me doing like a thousand patterns now, I think. And then this one made me think of my daddy. This is another Annie B's design and it's make hay while the sun shines. And boy, my dad was a rancher and farmer and, and he was all about, you know, getting out and getting it done. And he would say, hey, you got to make hay while the sun shines. Because there won't be any doing it when it rains. And I grew up on a ranch, and I have hauled hay. It is no fun whatsoever. It is hard, hot, sweaty work, always in the middle of the summer. Makes you itch, and I'm allergic to all the dust and stuff in it, so it made me sneeze like a fool. But, you know, there was no excuses. You were going to make hay while the sun shone. So this makes me think of my dad, who um, was just the best person ever, and um, I had to get that. I thought it was adorable, and um, I may see if I can figure out how to edit the motif on it to be a farmer instead of the lady, just for him. Put him in an old blue chambray button-down shirt and blue jeans, which is what he lived his life in. And then I have, um, I think, God Save the Queen coming. Um, but it's not here yet. But, you know, it's a bee thing, so I was a sucker for it. <clears throat> and then, oh, I don't know, two months ago maybe? I think it was Cindy Sorley who posted um, an album of some of these patterns. And I was in love instantly. Instantly. And I had to have them. So I ordered them. One, two, three, four of them. Because I've got no good sense. None whatsoever. Uh, these are by an Italian designer. And I'm not going to attempt to say her name because I can't. You wouldn't recognize my gibberish of Italian anyway. If it was French, we might have a fighting chance, although my high school French has been a little bought back. Um, but no, I, I've got no clue. So I'm just going to hold it up. There it is. That's the designer. So can't say it. Suore e Batacore. Something like that. I don't know. Um, these are, I think they're like Easter patterns. I mean, there's a bunny, a couple of bunnies, and a, I think it's a sheep, and some people. But I thought they would just be really cute, finished as, um, I think I may do them as ornaments like this, and have a little Easter tree. Cats will have fun with that, won't they? But anyway, very cute. And then this is another one by the very same designer who I still can't say the name of. And this one is, I love Christmas in the snow. And I, I know that because it says it down here in English. Um, but the title of the pattern is, I think, that in Italian. And, you know, I, I'm not having any luck with that. But it's so cute. I thought it was adorable. Had to have it. And then the next one, same designer, same Italian lady, Cuore e Batacore, or something like that. Um, this one is um, the perfect place for happiness is in the craft room. So I think that's going to need to go. And I'm sorry about the glare, y'all. That's going to need to go in the wall, on the wall in my craft room. Just adorable. Love it, love it, love it. Bright, happy colors. <clears throat> and then this one. Oh, I was so in love with this one. This was I Love My Home. And let me tell y'all, about, well, 2007, we sold our 3,500 square foot home. 
and moved into a rinky-dink, crappy little builder-grade house that was 1,100 square feet. So we could, so I wouldn't have to go back to work full time. And so, you know, we could kind of consolidate debt and, you know, get our heads above water. I hated that house. I hated it so much. Half of everything I owned was in storage. Um, and I just hated it. But now, since we moved to Arkansas last year, I'm not in a fancy house by any imagination. That's about 1,500 square feet. It's just about the right size for us. Um, and I absolutely do love my home. And I couldn't be happier here. And I'm just going to have to do this and hang it on my hall tree right in the front entrance because it's perfect. Just perfect. I love my home. And I love that I am no longer, yeah. I, I did work for the last... Um, seven or eight years managing my husband's business. The majority of that I was able to do from home. I didn't go into the office every day, but I did work. Um, not as a nurse anymore, just doing administrative stuff. Um, but I'm thrilled to be retired and in my house that I love and I'm happy in and don't feel like I'm tripping over everything every time I turn around because, oh my God, that last house was so little. And we were so cramped. And, you know, 15 cats, 1,100 square feet. It worked. And it got us to where we are now. So I'm grateful. God put us on the right path. Kept us from making some really poor decisions about stuff. Um, but I love my home. I'm happy to be here. I think that's all. Oh, wait. No, no. There's two more. I lied. Two more. I think I ordered these from Cindy Sorley too. But I'm not absolutely positive about that. Because, you know, you get so much stuff. And if you don't write it down, it's here and gone. This is... Isn't that cute? That's just adorable. I had to have it. Had to have it. So cute. I like sheep. Never had a sheep. My daddy raised cows, not sheep. We never had sheep. Which may be why I like sheep better than cows. Now that I think about it. Because uh, let me tell you, I can appreciate chickens from a distance too. I have no particular fondness for them either. But anyway... And then the last thing was witchy watchy. Isn't that adorable? It's from Raise the Roof. And there is a whole series of these which I would love to do and put up on the wall in my laundry room. Because I just think they are so funny. They're adorable. I think there's no cross stitch in there. So hey, every room needs a cross stitch in it, right? So that's on my haul. I'm very, very, very happy with it. Very happy. And I haven't stitched anything. Well, like, you know, tiny little bit on my um, Lizzie Kate um, things unseen. Tiny little bit. But I've been on a sewing kick, project bag making kick. So that's what I've done. And I'm going to do another video about that probably tomorrow. And it's not a criticism of anybody except me. It's about my experiences in making the project bags. Um, the ladies that did the tutorials, which are um, Bonna Epperson and um, Suzette with Primitive Stitcher, both did a wonderful job. I any errors in the prob or problems were me, me and mine, not them. I want to make sure that's clear. So. Anyway, that's all I've got with the exception of... Yeah, I mentioned we moved out of that 3,000 square foot house into, you know, teeny tiny house. And I'm still unpacking boxes from when we moved a year ago. And living in that little house did um, kind of make me appreciate the fact that I own too much crap. And I need to thin it out and, not, and get rid of it. And, you know, I packed a whole bunch of stuff up that I um, had sent it off to somebody who had lost all their stitching supplies um, when the hurricane, when Harvey came through Houston. But I found a couple more pieces. One of them is some 22 count hardanger. It's uh, 12 by 18. And the other one is a 16 count Ada in a sage color. And it is 16 and a quarter by 25 and a quarter. So I'm gonna give those away to somebody. And because Facebook or um, YouTube has such crazy giveaway rules, let me be perfectly clear. I am the sponsor of this giveaway. I own these, nobody donated them. 
Um, this is el anybody 18 years or older living in the U.S. is eligible for this. And I'm sorry about the living in the U.S. thing, but, you know, money's tight and I can't afford the postage to Timbuktu. Um, and all you've got to do to be entered is be a sub subscriber and leave a comment on this, uh, on this floss tube video here. And today is the 18th. Um, Christmas is a week from today. So I'm going to plan to draw these probably on um, Tuesday the 26th because you could not pay me enough to go out into the post-Christmas crazy shopping stuff. So I'll be home anyway. So if you would like to be entered in the giveaway, I'm going to draw two separate people. Um, and I'll do the random, you know, assign everybody's comment a number and do the random number generator. Um, but if you would like to win either the 16 count Ada or the 22 count Hardanger, um, please subscribe and leave a comment and somebody's going to get them. And I found some other stuff I'm going to give away soon too. So that's what I'm packing all those boxes will do for you. <laughs> that and an appreciation of don't keep too much crap. So thank y'all so much again for listening. I sure do appreciate it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing all my goodies. Boy, I enjoyed getting them. Can't wait to start working on all this stuff. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks, FlossTube. Stitchy love to everybody. Y'all take care. Bye.